Hey guys, so you may have noticed I haven't managed to get a video out in a couple of weeks and that has been because I've just been really busy uh, working on multiple projects. Um, I've got various videos in the pipeline um, for some pretty cool stuff actually, I think you'll find it quite interesting, but none of those videos are ready yet so I figured that what I'd do in today's video is just talk to you a little bit about what projects it is that I'm actually working on, uh, just trying to give you a bit of an idea what kind of videos to expect in the next couple of weeks. Um, so I think I'll start off uh, by talking about my swordfish. It's this big old plane here. Um, I've done a couple of videos about this uh, in the past, and this is a really good aircraft. I really like this. Um, but I think in one of my videos I mentioned, the one thing I didn't like was the fact that the FPV camera was mounted up here. Um, so I mean, when you were flying, you always had the nose of the aircraft in the shot. What I've done, it took me about two weeks to do, was I've designed a 3D printed nose that goes on the front. Um, I don't personally think this looks very nice, actually. Uh, it's, it's functional, it works very well. Um, it's holding the camera and the Walks Nail video transmitter at the same time. Um, but I don't think it looks particularly good, although when I put this on Instagram, I had so many people saying that they thought it looked really cool. Um, a lot of people said it looked like something out of Star Wars. So yeah, maybe you'll like it, maybe you won't. But this is one of the things I've been working on. Um, and I'm actually, I'm really happy with it, Like even though it doesn't look good. It works absolutely great. Um, it took quite a long time to design this because not only did I need to come up with a mount which held the camera and the video transmitter but it also had to be a mount which enabled plenty of airflow and that's why we've got this big like sort of open mouth sort of like air duct on the front um, but this works really well um, the scariest part of this was cutting the nose off uh, it took me about an hour to do and about 58 minutes of that with me just sat there staring at it working out how to cut it because obviously you need to cut it so it's a completely straight cut um, I spent ages trying to devise a really clever way of doing it and then in the end I just got a knife and just sliced it and it was fine. Um, but yeah, so I did eventually come up with this mount and this mount is a two-part mount as well. You can't really see it on here. I'll put a thing up here somewhere showing it. But basically the first part of the mount, that glues directly onto the aircraft um, and it's got an opening in it which leads into the battery compartment um, to allow airflow in. The second part, the bigger part on the front, that's then bolted onto the, the other bit. Um, the reason for doing that is it means that you can access the video transmitter if you need to or take the camera out. Like if you ever need to do any maintenance on it you can take it off without having to you know rip the, the glue or whatever. Um, so yeah this works really well and I've flown this a couple of times now. I was really nervous the, the first time I flew it that it was going to turn out that there wasn't enough cooling and that actually the video transmitter is going to overheat. Um, but I mean, I've tested it several times and I quite often watch the aircraft on the ground waiting for like a sat lock, the video transmitter will start to overheat and you'll get a warning in the goggles saying it's starting to overheat. But as soon as you launch this, you throw it in the air, I, I swear to God, within about like two, three seconds, that warning goes because it's getting so much airflow in there, it's cooling the video transmitter down straight away. So yeah, this, uh, this works really good. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. And uh, yeah, um, if anyone's interested in having this mount, um, to you know, make their own or to modify it for whatever reason. I will put this on Thingiverse and I'll put the, um, the Fusion 360 file on there as well. So if you want to tweak it, then so you can. So yeah, that's uh, one of the projects I've been working on. And like I said, that took me about two weeks. I had to go through many, many design revisions to get to that point. Um, I think there's like five or six different designs that I, I came up with before I finalized it. Um, so yeah. Um, another project I've been working on, um, where have I put it? Over here. Another project I've been working on is with my T1. So this is the T1 that I've had for over a year now. Um, and this is actually a, well, I guess technically like a V1. Um, although he wing haven't sort of like officially declared V1, V2, V3 or whatever. Um, this is very much a first generation T1. This is one of, uh, like the pre-releases, like Hewing sent this to me before the aircraft was even available for sale. Um, and a couple of unique things about the, the V1s, um, for a start it doesn't have the little air vents on the side that like V2 and V3 models have. Um, but also this is like it's white EPP um, and it's the lightweight like white EPP as well. So this T1 actually is really light when it's fully loaded up, um, especially compared to any of the V2s. But um, anyway, I've had this aircraft for over a year and a half and it's had a lot of use. Um, you've probably been able to tell from my channel that like it's been my favorite aircraft because a lot of my videos have been featuring this. Um, but I recently sort of came to the conclusion that it was probably time to upgrade this. Um, because it's had a lot of use and it's had a lot of 
landings, <laughs> uh, it started to show some signs of some wear and tear. So what it did was I bought a new T1. And this is one of the V2s. Well, I think technically this is actually a V3 um, because there's various differences in this that my buddy doesn't have in his T1, and his is also a grey one, um, but his is an older version, so I think this is technically a V3. But anyway, what I did um, was I literally just lifted the electronics out of the white T1 and put it into here. Like, this is a PMP, so already got the motors in the ESC and everything. So all I had to do was take out the uh, video transmitter, camera, uh, receiver, and then the flight controller just came out all in one go. I didn't need to like do any soldering or anything, so I just unscrewed the old one plug the new one in and then just connected the wires which are all on plugs. Um, so the whole process of taking everything out of the old T1 and putting it into this new one took about an hour. You know, and that's what I was expecting. I was expecting it to be a nice quick and easy job, which was not a good thing to expect. <laughs> so one thing that I did differently on this one is I added some LED strips on the back. Um, just like two little basic LED strips. It's four LEDs per strip. Um, been quite inspired by the videos of, um, what's it, Shelby Vol and Michael Scott, I think it is. You've probably seen their videos. They've got their T1s covered in LEDs and they look really cool. So I thought it'd be cool to just put some LEDs on mine. However, that ended up causing a lot of problems. I don't know what happened. I don't know what the issue was exactly. But after I installed these LEDs and I wired them up to the flight controller, I then went and connected the aircraft to iNav Configurator, so I could then program the LEDs. And um, when you're on the Configurator, when you set a color, you have to then click Save for the effect to take effect, and then the flight controller will reboot. So I think at first I set the LEDs to red, and I was like, don't like that. So changed it to, I don't know, yellow or something. Click Save and reboot, that was fine. Uh, did it again, set it to purple, that was fine. I then set it to green, click Save and reboot, at which point some strange things happened. So firstly, this Elevon suddenly started twitching. It just went full up, then down, then up, then down. And this LED strip just started flickering. Just flickered a couple of times. And then the entire aircraft shut down, just completely died. There was no indication that it was powered on, even though the light bulb was still in it. Um, which obviously had me a bit panicked. <laughs> so uh, yeah, long story short, just to save you having to hear about all of it, what happened was that the flight controller died. Um, I don't know why. There's a little MOSFET on the underside of the board that had just blown out. I don't know whether that was anything to do with a power regulator, like a Beck or something got overloaded. I don't know. But either way, it killed the flight controller, um, which obviously meant that the entire build, which was basically finished, was set back to, well, I've got to start all over again. Um, so that's been really frustrating because I love this aircraft and you know, I was looking forward to getting it back out again that day. You know, I was expecting to do, do the whole transfer of the electronics in an hour and then fly it that day. But obviously having a dead flight controller, it's game over, isn't it? You can't fly with that. Um, and annoyingly, the flight controller that I had on my original T1 was a, I think it was a Matek F405 WSE, which is a really good flight controller, but Matek has discontinued them. Um, they discontinued them last year. I was hoping to find a second-hand one somewhere. I've been looking around online to see if I can find a second-hand one, but... I haven't been able to. So what I've ended up doing is ordering a Matek H743W Lite flight controller. Um, very expensive. Like Matek flight controllers are so expensive at the moment. Um, it's about £85, which I don't know what it is in dollars. I'll put it there somewhere. But yeah, very expensive for Matek flight controllers now. Um, but the reason why I went with that flight controller is because it's got almost exactly the same dimensions as the uh, Matek uh, F405 WSC I had in there before. It means that the flight controller mount that I've already designed and already got installed, I can still use that with the new flight controller. Um, so I've just ordered that today, so hopefully I'll be able to tomorrow and you know, hopefully I'll have the time to get that installed and wired up and then I'll be able to fly this on the weekend. That would be nice. So yeah, that's been a bit of a headache. Um, other things I've been working on. So I had a little package from Hawkeye, Hawkeye FPV. Um, if you don't know who Hawkeye FPV is, it's a company that normally, like they make like screens, like monitors for FPV. Um, and that's one of the things they sent me. They actually sent me this screen here. Um, I actually can't remember the name of this, so I'll have to put it on the screen. It's got a, a 
fancy name. But yeah, they sent me this little screen to uh, play around with. Um, I don't know whether they expect me to review it or not. Um, I probably won't review it, but I will feature in a fair few of my videos. But ever since I've moved over to um, like flying on HD FPV, I sold my analog gear. I used to have a pair of Orcas um, and I sold them on. But then I quickly realized that was probably a bad idea because you know sometimes I'm still want, gonna wanna do like analog FPV for various reasons. So I was keen to get something that would allow me to do analog FPV. Um, so when Hawkeye got hold of me and he said like, would I like a screen? I was like, yeah, absolutely. Because you know this screen's got a built-in diversity receiver and whatnot. So yeah, in the future, if I do any stuff with like analog FPV, I'll be using this screen to fly, you know, rather than some goggles. So yeah, it's cool they sent me that, but the more interesting thing that they sent me, I'm actually quite excited about this, is he sent me this little camera here. I apologize that the lighting is not very good in here. Um, I'll put a picture up here so you can see the camera better. They sent me this little camera here, um, which looks a lot like a Runcam thumb. And in fact, that's what they called this camera. It's a Hawkeye thumb. Um, this is very similar to the Runcam thumb. So this is a, a 4K, HD camera with a built-in gyro, you know, very similar to the one cam from Pro specifically. Um, but the reason why this camera is actually quite interesting is because it's got a couple of additional features. Uh, the most interesting one being that you can actually use this as an FPV camera. Um, it's got on the back, on this plug here, it's got a pin which will connect to an analog video transmitter. So you can use this as a analog FPV camera. And I've tested it and it actually does work pretty good. Um, some other nice features on it as well is the fact that like on the Runcam, I think on the, the Runcam Fun 1 you have to change the settings using a text file which you put on the SD card which is annoying um, and then on the Runcam Fun Pro you have to use a QR code thing which you just like hold the app up on your phone in front of the camera to change settings and then it worked sometimes but it wasn't great. But this camera here on this other little plug here you actually have a little like OSD programmer board and then when you've got this connected up to you know your goggles or to a screen like that one down there, you actually have like a full menu that you can actually access and you can change the settings. And there's a lot more settings that you can change on this camera than there is on any of the Runcam ones. This is a much more customizable camera um, than anything Runcam has to offer. And the important thing to mention is this camera is cheaper than the Runcam Fun Pro as well. So it's got more features than the Runcam Fun Pro, but it costs less. So yeah, this is a good little camera. I'll be having a review come out about this in the next couple of weeks. You know, hopefully sooner than that. So yeah, keep your eye out for that. Um, the other thing, where have I put it? Wait there a second. The other thing that I'm gonna be working on, and I had a chance to work on it yet, the He Wing sent me this. This is their new T1 VTOL PNP kit. Um, so like, those of you who've been watching my channel for a while, like you'll know that I did do a video on the uh, He Wing T1 VTOL a while back, but, at that time, the only option was to buy like a generic T1 PMP aircraft and then you'd buy the VTOL kit separate and then you'd have to install that VTOL kit yourself, which was actually quite a complicated process. Um, it wasn't just the fact that you had to, you know, strip apart the old T1, install the new stuff, which is a bit fiddly, but then obviously you had to get your own flight controller and then do all the RG pilot programming and that was really complicated. Um, but this new aircraft from He Wing, it comes with the VTOL kit pre-installed. Oh, oh. Put a picture up there so you can see it. Comes the VTOL like electronics all pre-installed, so the, the motors, the tilt servos, all that's pre-installed. But it also comes with a flight controller. This is a He Wing branded flight controller that's uh, been pre-configured with RD Pilot, so it's already done. Um, and it also comes with a GPS as well. So like that's a really good little package. Um, obviously, I haven't had a chance to build this yet, and I'll get this done soon, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, but in theory, it should be really quick and easy to set this up. Um, all I'll do is I'll just add some analog FPV gear to it and a receiver. And then it should be just some very basic configuration in RD Pilot to get it set up. So yeah, I'll be having a video on this in a little bit. I think He Wing wants me to do just a bit of a tutorial, uh, just kind of showing how to set it up. But it should be fairly easy. So if there's anyone out there that's interested in you know getting a VTOL, um, and they like the look of the He Wing T1 VTOL, but they're a bit put off by how complicated it was, this could be a good option for you because you know most of the hard work's done. So yeah, I've got this video to work on, a tutorial at some point soon, and then I've still got the review of this little guy, the Hawkeye thumb camera that'll be coming out soon. Um, and then I'm going to be doing a video on the Swordfish, just talking a little bit more about that 3D printed mount. I'm showing some footage of done with that. Um, and I've also just been doing a lot of flying recently. 
One of my buddies, um, he left FPV for a while, um, but this year he decided to get back into it. And he's into fixed wing and he's just, he's really keen to fly all the time. And I'm, I'm always keen to fly. And uh, yeah, we've been out doing a lot of flying, a lot of formation. Um, he's been doing quite a lot of long range flying um, kind of things. We've got loads of really good footage that, you know, I need to do something with. So at some point soon, I'll probably also just put out some flight videos um, just so you can see some of the cool flying we've been doing. Um, so yeah, that's basically what I've been working on for the last couple of weeks, and it gives you an idea what to expect. Um, I thought it'd just be good just to get a video out, just so you know, guys know I'm still here, I'm still working on things. Um, so yeah, I hope you find this video interesting, and I've kind of sort of yapped on a little bit, but I just thought it'd be good to just kind of you know keep you updated on what's going on. So uh, yeah, that's basically all I've got to say at the moment, so I'll catch you in the next video, guys. Cheers. Bye.